first on the agenda is Billings Park Commission interviews. Is uh, Jacob here? Or, uh, do you want to come on up to the chair there? I'll get it. I, I, I. Hey, we um, we have your application here, and uh, we read through it. Do you want to um just give a little bit of a summary about yourself, um, and your interest in the Billings Park Commission? Yeah. Uh, so first off, Jacob, between y'all, uh, I grew up on Long Island. By no means imagination and conservationist paradise, uh, but I fell in love with the outdoors and with environmentalism and the underground acts. So when I uh, was figuring out where to go to college, the choice was obvious, the college in the hills at Dartmouth. I'd say it was lucky enough to come up here. Uh, while I was at Dartmouth, I worked on a trail crew in the Appalachian, in the, on the Appalachian Trail in New Hampshire. Uh, so we made trails for a summer. I did sciences and during COVID, uh, my now fiance and I got a place in, or rented a house in Norwich. Um, and so for a year, we actually basically never set foot on Dartmouth's campus and became members of the community. So we wanted to figure out a way to stay after we graduated. She left it up here. Um, so we graduated and uh, we found a place here in Woodstock and the draw of this house was that it's across the street from Billings Park. Uh, and so now I work at Dartmouth. I work in a climatology lab, but pretty much every other day, if not more, I walk around the park with my dogs and I love it. And so I think that, um, over the years, I've developed these skills of trail building and mapping with GIS and other things. I think I could put them to really good use and help preserve the park and uh, promote its responsible and uh, sustainable use uh, for generations going forward. Excellent. Thank you. Jimmy, um, have you been to any meetings? Oh, yeah, I was really hoping to go to yesterday's, but I had to, um, I was down on Long Island yesterday for a doctor's appointment. I got up last night. But we'll be able to make the meetings. Yes. Are and future doctors. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, thanks. appreciate cool. it. Thanks so much. And is Sarah? It looks like she's on her screen. Do you want to go ahead and unmute yourself, introduce yourself, and give, tell us a little about yourself? Hi there. Sorry, I can't be joining you in person. Long work day. <laughs> um, my name is Sarah. Nice to meet you all virtually. Um, my name is Sarah Goldfein. I am a um, local physical therapist here in town, and I also teach at River Valley Community College. Um, so I sort of have a lifelong commitment both to education and to the importance of movement and doing so in the outdoors. So the Billings Park Commission position really spoke to me because it sort of marries my two interests in um, preservation education and also in just staying active um, and just like the previous gentleman who spoke most days you can find me doing something in the park whether it's hiking in summer or cross-country skiing or mountain biking on the peg trails in summer um, so I'm just really looking forward to continuing to give back to the community because that's what I really love so that's why I'm here thank you and have you been to a meeting? I did. I went to last month's meeting. It seems like a great group. They've got a lot of neat irons in the fire, and um, it's a great group. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, do we want to? Since we have um, two vacancies and two applicants, I would um, move that we appoint. Eric Goldstein and Jacob Alice to the Billings Park. I'll second that. Motion by Susan, second by Ray. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. Uh, so that motion carries. Uh, we have an interview. Is Justin Quinn? Chosen and Quinn, if you're here, if you could let us know. He's on Zoom, but he's muted. Yes, I'm here. Sorry. Oh, all right. There you are. So we have an application for you for um, the Conservation Commission. And if you would that just is tell us a little bit about yourself and your interests here. 
Yeah, uh, I grew up in Woodstock, went to Woodstock Union High School. Um, I'm a third generation Woodstock resident. My grandfather had a dairy farm on Prosper Road where my father then built uh, his house on adjacent property, which was then given, which was given to him from his father, my grandfather. And so I have a long family history of in Woodstock and want to see it moved in a more uh, a delicate direction, I guess, um, in trying to keep more of our, our historical values with farming and sugaring and logging with also knowing that need, there needs to be some development uh, in order to keep everyone prosperous moving forward. So that's kind of where I'm at. Like, just want to be having more of a an active stand on on our community and how everything moves forward. Thank you. Uh, any any questions? Have you been to any of their meetings? Uh, I have been to a couple conservation meetings, and I've just sat in uh, as just a, a person of interest when my because my father's been on the commission for quite some years um but just sat in just as someone to to learn uh when i was much younger um so but yeah i've been to a, a few other meetings in the recent past yes thank you i make a motion to uh point justin quinn to conservation motion by ray second by susan all in favor Aye. Aye. That motion carries. <clears throat> We're all set with interviews. We have a couple addition, uh, additions and deletions. Um, we have the final figures from the EEI loan from last meeting. So I'd like to fit that under old oh, business right before the ARPA survey discussion. Um, Actually, I think that's the only, the only addition. Uh, are there any citizen comments that are for anything not on the agenda tonight? Yeah. Eric, do you want to receive your manager's report? Yeah, um, just a few things I want to touch on today. Um, one is I spent a few days last week at a conference in Burlington, um, the National City Managers Association. Um, very good to be out there with other people to kind of talk about issues we're having across the country um, and kind of really just having a chance to talk to other people in the same position and what they're facing and how we can work together. So that was very useful and I look forward to more of those conferences uh, time and budget wise um, in, the, in the future. Um, second, one of the things I've been trying to do since I got to Woodstock is try to form a better sense of a, commun a community with all aspects of what happens in Woodstock. Um, with that in mind, I've had a few conversations with members of the school uh, district about how we can kind of work together and have more conversations. Um, with that in mind, they want to invite myself and a board member from both boards to a meeting on May 1st, um, just kind of introduce ourselves and kind of start the conversation of how we can work together and how our, our interests, you know, can combine. Um, so that's May 1st at 630. Um, so we don't decide now, but if a board member or one of the ones willing to attend with me, um, I'm gonna ask the same of the trustees. Maybe a very good opportunity for us to kind of show our support for them and hopefully vice versa. Um, third, uh, we have finalized uh, the meeting for the annual audit. So on May 2nd, um, we'll have two meetings, one for the trustees and one for the select board, uh, starting at 6.30 where the audit will come to report the findings on the FY22 audit and then answer questions um, from the boards. Um, so I'll be again on May 2nd at 6.30 here in Town Hall. Uh, fourth, um, I've reached out to our local representatives um, to help facilitate and hopefully having our federal representatives come to Woodstock to take a, a tour of the um, main wastewater facility treatment um, and have an idea of what we're doing and what we plan on doing going forward, um, and hopefully to try to secure some funding from them uh, to offset the costs. Um, I do that today, so I haven't heard back yet, but hopefully that can work itself out, or at least try every avenue we can to keep you know the, the cost down for that. Um, 
finally, uh, myself and Mark Hunter had a meeting with the state yesterday. Um, a number of years back, Woodstock and the states agreed to look at um, an issue by um, Bayside Lodge. Bay. Yeah, um, there's a culvert there. Um, the Woodstock agreed to pay about $15,000 for design study. Um, that study was done. Um, and what they found out is the work they have to do is right next to a sewer line for the town owns. Um, and based on state statutes, the town has to pay for the costs of that water um, sewer line being for the work to be done. Um, the cost is about $150,000. Um, and if the state decides to do the work, which they tend to do at this point, um, the town will have to cover the, the cost of, of that money. Um, so I've talked to the to the state about different ways we could possibly finance that, and I'm looking at other avenues to find funding to kind of help offset the cost of that. Um, the timeline is to put a bid out in November, um, and then with the work starting in May or June of next year. Um, so, and there, they also agreed to come to in front of the board and discuss their work, um, if the board want that to happen as well. So that's my updates. Thank you. There's no questions on my updates. Uh, we can move to the finance report. Um, I apologize the, the members got the finance report just this morning, um, just due to some issues we had internally. Um, but if there are any questions, I'm happy to go over it. Um, my projections still have the town coming in around $68,000 in a surplus at year end based on salaries and everything else. Um, that number obviously will change as expenses go throughout the rest of the year. Um, but at this point, as of today, we'll, we'll look at it in a pretty good situation to end the year, positive. Um, but if anything changes, obviously let the, the boards know. Thank you. The, uh, we have Soulfully Good Outside Consumption Permit and uh, Shine Associates uh, Woodstock Beverage Second Class for Tobacco. Can I just hop in here quickly? Yeah. Um, so Susan Ford and I have been trying to get more information from the state on how the liquor licenses are presented. Um, Susan has done a lot of work on her own uh, to try to get some of these answers um, answered. And um, I honestly been playing phone tag with the person in the state to last two days. Um, so every time I call her, she's out of the office, Michelle's me, I'm out of the office. Uh, but so we are working on a solution to try to get the board more information on why the permits are not as filled in as they used to be. Uh, and once we have that, we'll obviously give it to the board so they can have all the information. Thank you. Next. So I think I think if we just follow suit for the last couple of months. I'm, I make a motion to move hopefully good for outside and Shine Associates Woodstock Beverage for Class 2 Tobacco. And I would, I could add that it's subject to our understanding that the state's reviewing the permit application since we're not able to. Yep, so permit to approve Soulfully Good and Shine Associates subject to state review. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that motion carries, those are approved. Um, so I saw Eric Lafayette on there earlier. Is he still? Yeah, he's, there, he's yeah. still on there. Yeah. Okay. Hey, everybody. Sorry about oh, that. Um, so, if we want to dive into the, um, let me pull up the. Uh, Eric, do you have the uh, PDF that you sent us? Are you, would you be able to share your screen with that? Um. Let me just double check. Uh, are you, do you guys want me to pull up the actual lease terms that I sent you over? The um, I think we were we talked mostly previously about the a ten year finance option. It looked like there was a ten and a fifteen. Was I? That yeah, that that's pretty much what it boiled down to. Um, was what option you guys ultimately wanted to take? Was it the ten or the fifteen year option? Um, and I think what we were looking at is, let me just pull open. So I can share my screen um, if that's share. Um, the host has disabled it. All right, Nikki, are you there? So on the on the uh, 15 year lease, you're looking at a 4.99% interest rate. 
um, with annual payments of um, $62,344 a year. You should be able to share now. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Um, I, we've already gone over the projects, all the different scopes of work that's associated with in the ECM matrix. Um, we took a couple items off from the list um, during the last meeting and updated the price. So the final price came out to um, the 647,550. Um, with and then we went out and we went out to municipal leasing services that um, solicits um, prices from multiple banks. And they came back with um, these two options, one at a 15 year, a 4.99% interest rate over 15 years. And the other one uh, was a 10 year option with a slightly lower rate. And this was really the last piece that we needed to, to finalize the, the deal with you guys. And we we're just curious what term you ultimately wanted to move forward with. So just a, a brief summary. Um... The 10 year, the difference between the 10 year and the 15 year is about $20,000 a year. So the 10 year, you'll pay $20,000 more a year. Um, but with the 15 year, you'll end up paying about $100,000 more overall the cost of the project. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think I favor the, the 10 year just because of the overall um, savings, but. We put money in the budget for this last year. Yes, I believe so. For the, the first eight, eight, about eighty thousand was allocated on the budget for this current for FY twenty four. Yeah, I think the ten year makes sense. How much money? Excuse me. How much money we did we budget each year? It would just been for the FY twenty four, and uh, I believe it was around eighty around eighty thousand, so close to the ten year. Um, and know, how much did we put in the capital plan for this? I would have to look that. I, I'm not sure. Uh, given how much we, given how much we don't have, I I don't understand why we wouldn't do the fifteen year lease. I don't know that this would have been on the I don't think capital plan because this was from the. Um, it was. It wasn't a. I believe so. We knew about this work when the capital plan was done two years ago. Um, thank you. It would be really helpful if things like this came before the finance committee because we have some information, but then we come to this meeting and we're not prepared because we don't know about these things. Uh, so I could call up the plan from two years ago, but actually it hasn't been updated. All during the entire presentation of this plan, the discussion has been on a tenure, um, tenure note, tenure lease. So mm -hmm. nothing's Nothing's new with doing a 10 year on this. So what's the net present value of a 10 year lease versus a 15 year lease? I don't have that. We don't have those numbers in front of us. No, but but he did, Eric did mention that it's about a hundred thousand dollar total difference. So in the that's, in this case, that's, a, that's the cost. That's not the net present value. It doesn't yeah, I don't have the, the net present value of them. No. So I think John is here too and might back me up or not over the different financial view, but net present value is often a way of making these decisions. And without that, I hate to make not make this decision today, but um, finding 20,000 extra a year is not the easiest thing for us to do. What's the there's a question on the floor, Roger, if you want to go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm very confused. I thought we were talking about our product. That's coming next. Okay, so what are we talking about? I don't see it on the agenda. That's, we added at the beginning of the, okay, the meeting. So this is, explain what it is to this is the um, ballot measure from last year for the energy efficiency. And these are the final numbers that um, were carried over from last month. We wanted to get these numbers in so we could get the rates before you know before okay. they go up again all right thank you now that's that's why we added it uh john go ahead well i do i think that w w it would be if it wouldn't be it wouldn't be that hard offline for eric to you know to do the the calculation the finance committee could help him. i mean i'm thinking about our eric or or eric left yet either eric <laughs> yeah. but, or the finance committee any of us could do it we just need to know the interest rate and that would 
the interest rate for the for the two options that would allow us to calculate which one is quote cheaper i think you know but there is also a question of timing you know like uh a 15 year mortgage is more is anyway shorter we could figure out which one is less expensive over time taking into account the time value of money which is what npv does um it, yeah john we do have those rates i forwarded them over the 15 year was just slightly higher um 4.99 percent whereas the 10 year was 4.97 percent so actually the rate is is very close between the two that's really surprising, actually. But that's yeah. I can't. I guess I can't really. I can't really do it in my head. I, um. I. I guess I don't. I, so I. I if if John, if I if I suggest something, um, there'll be a state board meeting in two weeks. Um, you know, we have the numbers. Myself and friends can make it sit down in the next week and a half run these numbers and then have the finance committee present the two numbers to the select board next meeting. And that could be a compromise. That, that sounds great. Okay. Right. And we have a meeting scheduled actually, Eric. So th that's perfect. Thank you. Okay. That sounds great. These, just so you guys are aware, these interest rates, they hold for 30 days. And I believe this was issued as of Friday, the 14th. So we have until essentially, uh, May 14th to be able to execute um, this lease agreement under the same terms. Can I also, it, just something that you may probably have already considered, I have not been following this conversation over the various meetings closely, but the state announced, and Eric, you, our Eric, Eric Duffy, you probably know this better than I do, but the state announced about a week ago, a, an 80 or $90 million pot of funds. They were looking to lend, to make low interest loans um, you know, for base for various priorities like housing, I would assume energy efficiency might be one of those, and those are much lower interest rates. Do you know? Do you know that program? And would this would this apply? Or we can deal with the this, line. I know the program. I don't know if this was applied, but this is also something that was voted on town meeting. So not to follow through would I, I think have to require another town meeting about to, you know, reallocate the funds. As well. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not suggesting. I'm just suggesting yeah. that we apply for it. If if we could apply for that loan, it might be a different way to finance it. Yeah, but absolutely. Here. Yeah. Don, do you know who specifically was administering that? Was it Vita or was it? I, I don't know. I saw the press release. I, I can. And Eric sounds like Eric knows about it. I, I'll get offline. I'll send that to to both of you. When I just need to find the email. Okay. okay. Sounds okay. good. Uh, Jennifer. No, he'll no. work with the finance committee and with Eric, and there'll be a final, a singular recommendation, is my understanding, yeah. right? Yeah. Thank you. For Thank you. Um, so it brings us to the ARPA survey expenditure discussion. Uh, we have several items. Thank you. Uh, several items with several presentations. Um, these are ultimately going to be the decision of the select board. Um, so we appreciate everyone coming down and presenting and providing information for us so we can make an informed decision. Uh, we'd like to keep the presentations to three minutes. So Ray's going to kind of keep track and we'll start out. Um, okay. Um, Going off of just to pick an order, um, the actually a good place to start was I'll just bring up we had talked in the past about the fire department air packs. Uh, Chief Green gave me some numbers today, I forwarded them out. Um, so the total unfunded amount for the air pack is 115,840. So if we uh, so we'll take that off of the total amount of the word. Doing the final yeah final distributions um i thought we talked about using funds to any funds that were left over from the building the building and um uh surplus from last year's budget if we had to yeah okay. um we just we don't want to um over expenditure on the right on the arpa so we're going to account for at least this even okay. though it could go down again right 
Um, so we've got the dam removal by Billings Farm. We can start with. And I have slides that somebody has. If you want those to be pulled up, if not, we can just talk. Okay. Nikki, you pull those slides up, please. Yes. My name is Ron Rhodes. I live in South Pomfret, and I work for the Connecticut River Conservancy. We're a nonprofit organization. We work in all four states of the Connecticut River. Um, we're talking about ARPA, potential ARPA funds for the Billings Pond Dam Removal. Uh, the dam is uh, just over there by the intersection of Elm and Old River Road. Uh, we've got a picture and a map of it that might be brought up here in a second. Yeah, thank you. Um, so the issue here is the old dam that's no longer serving a useful purpose. Um, it's not in use and it is blocking fish passage. It's blocking sediment transport. As you probably have seen over the years, there is a ton of sediment trapped upstream. So all of those fields flood all the way up into, you know, Barn and Pomfret Road there. Um, so the state of Vermont, Marie Gaduto, who is our basin planner for the Anaquichi River, years ago, she did a, uh, what they call a stream geomorphic assessment and a tactical basin plan. And the brook is, quote, stressed for sediment. So that sediment buildup is impairing water quality. It has temperature impacts, so the temperature increases in that muddy area above the dam. Um, and then, of course, the aquatic or organism passage, not just fish, but you know, most of us think about the, the brook trout that mm -hmm. are in there. Um, but just normal uh, river flows. If we go to the next page or slide, we got a state grant, CRC got a state grant last year to hire uh, Ripple Natural Resources Services. Matt Morosky is an engineer up in Randolph. Um, we've done several dam removals together. And he did a feasibility assessment, both on the Billings Pond Dam and then also the golf course dam. And his, his main, um, so that's just a sketch, one of the pages I pulled out of the uh, assessment he did. The next screen will show you um, his conclusion is that it is a, a doable project. Um, so instead of you know spending lots of money to find out it's a million dollar project, we we do this initial work. His cost estimate is two hundred ninety thousand dollars. That's to remove the concrete and the sediment, or some of the sediment that's trapped behind the dam, and then to restore the area back to a natural state. So anything that we um, disturb with an excavator has to be restored. And so there's tree plantings that happen after dam removals, et cetera. So all of that work, um, if we're able to get the engineering done this year and then the construction either next year or 2025, um, usually dam removals are anywhere from a three to five year project. So we're at about three minutes right now. Yeah. Okay. So I think, with the timing of ARPA, the um, it has to be voted on, you know, and designated this year and spent by 2026. Is there a portion of this that's um, up front that you're looking at that you're asking for? Or is, um... Well, we have engineering design costs this year, so that would be in the neighborhood of $50,000. And then the lion's share of the removal you know, cost would be removal cost in 2024 or 2025. There's, as you might imagine, there's a lot of permits required, historic preservation, stream alteration permit from the state, the US Army Corps of Engineers, so. Okay. And do you have funding for this? Any funding or is this? Good? We have um, some of our local members who are donors to CRC are helping us fund this initial for example, we've hired a contractor to start the historic preservation work. Um, and then the state grant funded last year's assessment. Okay. And what will your fundraising efforts be beyond? Yeah, so that's my job is to go out and find grants, right? So this is one possibility. Um, we've got a proposal into the Candidate Family Foundation. Um, we have talked to Marie Gaduto with the state about the potential for the same state grant that funded the initial assessment work last year. 
as that being a, a potential. Because usually we end up with, you know, four or five, six different grants because you're not going to get two hundred ninety thousand dollars from one. Mm -hmm. grant. Right. We get fifty here, one hundred twenty-five there. And we piece together several of them to get the project done. All right. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is Oh, we have a question. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just not clear on where this dam is located. It's a uh, red question the National Park, right? Sort of on the intersection of Elm and Old River Road. And who's the property on? The uh, Woodstock Inn, Village Farm, the foundation. Okay, and how much How much of the project are they planning? Good question. Uh, they are committed to helping um, with the staff time uh, dollars. By the board yet, but that is they will be a contributor. I can't tell you a dollar figure, it's not a full time, right? And they realize it. <laughs> is oh, yeah, Charlie. Could you ask the speakers to come up to the microphone, please? Yeah. We can hear on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to lend a voice of support okay. to this idea, uh, which I think is a, a, an excellent one. Uh, the whole idea of restoring uh, natural habitat, of course, as you know, is very close to the heart of uh, what we do at Venn. Yes. So I'm thank just you. offering my support, support for the idea. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> I got um, is Alita. Uh, May I ask a question about this one that it, before it goes, please? Go ahead. Is there any know. way that this is considered part of um, the Mount Tom? No, I don't. I think you said it was part of um, building farm property. Okay. Thank you. So, Lita, if you want to say a few words, we've got the next item on the list would be improvements to town hall, so town hall yep. rejuvenation. I'll, I'll be very brief. Um, I just want to, um, and I'm actually going to read this because I want to make sure I cover all the points. Thank you for the opportunity to say a few words about the use of ARPA funds to be directed to the work of the town hall building. As you know, I chair the town hall building committee and was on the leadership team. And the leadership team did extensive research on the building's condition, as well as provide visions for the future. Select board will receive a detailed report uh, from the town hall building committee at the May meeting and reports generated to date will be included in your packets. Of course, there are competing interests desirous of the ARPA funds but the sheer number of code violations, the lack of ADA compliance in the town hall building should be a compelling reason to address at least some or even one of the building's pressing, pressing issues. To date, work on the town hall rarely happens unless something is completely broken or equipment has become obsolete. Jill probably was members are years working on the HVAC system. Mm -hmm. The last renovation of the town hall happened in 1998 when Pentangle partnered with the town and raised funds necessary to rehabilitate the theater, the town offices, and the bathrooms. That, of course, means that the bulk of the electrical, plumbing, and HVA systems are 35 years old. I urge the select board to consider using some of the funds now since we both committees have solid cost estimates for work on critical infrastructure for the largest public space in Woodstock. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Was there any questions no. for Alita? No, we, you'll have a report in May. Yes. Yeah, you'll get your packets. We'll get. Uh, the com combined research from the leadership team and the town hall building committee will be in your packets for the May meeting and the architects will give you a full debrief on May 16th, which I think is your next meeting. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Jeff Grout and I'm the Intermunicipal Regional Energy Coordinator for Key Rourke. 
And I just would like to request a copy of that report if I could, because we're also looking at grant options for this building. So, okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Thank you. All right. Certainly. Mark, uh, we got some road sign additions and updates. Uh, do you want to come up? We've talked about um, the need for on Peterkin Hill at both ends for like an all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive type cautionary and cautionary speed, like the orange signs for 25 on Peterkin Hill. And I think there's some other road signs around town that have been graffitied or sun faded. Yep. Um, so kind of like like ballpark, what's the sign go for? And do you think maybe for 10 or 15, 20 signs, how much would we need? Uh, they're roughly about $50 a piece. Okay, so we can get quite a few signs for. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think, you know, if we did like $2,000 or $1,000 to get? Probably more than enough. There's plenty of uh, um, poles in stock in yeah. the highway department. Okay. When Mark said we touched on call a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's pretty perfect. Went a little bit of yep. road and... um, I know we got the. I remember seeing something about. We did get one one oh, vote. Yeah. From... One, but there's more outstanding then. Right, we're trying. We're going to. Um, so the town of Richmond said I work with an engineer. Um, and they put together a design package. Uh, we're going to solicit some more bids to try to see what we can get. But Mark on his own got one bid so far for. It was for $9,000? Uh, at the top of my head, I think it was right around four. Uh, the road behind the high school? Yes. Yeah, like, leading into the river? Would be. It's eroding into the river. Yes. That was just in case people weren't yeah. familiar. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. Um, How much? 400. 400. And what grant possibilities, if any, are there? I, uh, they're trying to work with Rita on that. And uh, there hasn't been anything that's going to come up in the in the future, so unfortunately. All right. Well, four hundred is better than some of the numbers we were talking. So. Yeah, uh, Matt Bissell, the engineer, his his cost um, estimate around six. Yeah. Um, his what he came up with the engineer. Um, I think it's a little over the top than what we need. Um, Installing uh, uh, under drain on the road and um, repairing some of the catch basins there. There's a couple of catch basins right there, but um, the one contract I met with two contractors. I only heard back from one. Um, the one that hasn't submitted a quote, I called his office and I haven't heard back from him. So I'm not going to chase him. Uh, that's when uh, Eric uh, emailed Matt mm -hmm. to uh, solicit. Um, you know, some other contractors in the area. Excellent. So the press was 49300. So it's just under past the Yeah. Excellent. All right. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Mark also wastewater. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Might as well. I didn't know. Sure. <laughs> yeah, going Back in the hot seat. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you want to talk with the main wastewater? I guess, yeah, I guess we have two, two wastewater things to discuss, possibly. And then, yeah. yeah, one yeah. being the, the the facade or the yeah. the overall uh, yep. appearance of. Here. So um, I actually got the designs today for the, so we're talking about the self with the uh, uh, wastewater treatment. Um, there's been some conversation about it being the big concrete block. Um, what can be done to kind of make it? I'm cool. sorry to interrupt again, but we cannot hear you. Is this better? Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so this is the South Woodstock um, wastewater treatment. It kind of has a big cement block. Um, so there's been conversations of what we could do to make it look a little better, make it fit more into the environment where it sits. Um, so just today we got the final designs from the engineers. Um, they got sent to the contractor to come back with a quote, a quotes on the three different designs. Um, and once we have the quotes, we're going to do a public meeting uh, to kind of show the three different quotes and the designs and have a discussion on what's the best road forward. Um, 
so we can kind of have an, uh, a chance to kind of talk about what we want to do and how much money we want to spend. Um, and the quotes could come in at, at any point. I have no idea how much it's going to be. Um, so I'll wait to see what that is. All right. And then the other um, discussion was just uh, the overall project at the main plant. At the main plant. Um, let's see if I can find that. So the, the main uh, plant is obviously a much larger project, uh, much higher cost, um, obviously much further out in, in scope and, and construction. Um, but if the select board chose to use opera funds for it, there are plenty of things that are happening now and going forward uh, that would be wrapped into the loan that could be covered by opera funds if so chosen. And do we, I, I know we got an email about the overall cost do we have a breakdown of some of the more immediate? Yeah, it, so it's in the email I sent. It has the whole thing. It should have a breakdown of how everything's going um, and how it will be set up. I think the attachment's called like page six or something. Yeah. But if it. you scroll down, but it doesn't tell us. It, there's a breakdown, but there's not a necessarily a breakdown of like the cost. Like uh, the chronology of the event. Yeah. Of the project. And, and part of that's uh, based on how the board wants to move forward um, and how we want to lay the lay process out. Um, when we expect to have a bond voted on and then approved, uh, we'll dictate how the rest of the thing plays out. Okay. I don't know if Mark, you have anything to add on? No. Have we thought about a coat of paint? First up. What did she say? Was that, was that you, Carrie? For yeah. Self, which, like, in, <laughs> I thought about a coat of paint. paint. Kind of you know, the farmhouse pottery building is a uh, cement block and it's painted white. And it's beautiful. So I, that, that could also absolutely be an option. Um, this started uh, kind of before me, um, but we're looking at all different options from just a fence with, you know, some uh, landscaping on it to cover it to fully covering it in shingles. Um, my big thing is to get a cost on all of them to, before we make any decision um, and see what the overall cost would be and go from there. Um, so a compromise could be a bucket of paints, um, or it could be the whole thing. So, Roger, just a, a point of clarification. Um, we're not making any decisions. Tonight. No, no. Okay. So, no. so when when decisions are getting closer to being made, it would be really helpful if we could broadly disseminate the actual concrete costs of each one of these things. So we're not talking about kind of. Right. You know, yeah. Valid. Um, we, we expect to do that with, you know, within the next month or so. We want this, this is our starting point where we can start to get the numbers together. Okay. And and also the whatever the final amount is as as the amount of that we have to spend. Mm -hmm. We know that. It's we know it's six sixty or yeah, I can the exact number. That's not being a moving target. That's that's it's that. that. We that's, have, yeah. yeah. We know how much we have, six hundred and something thousand. And the village has a separate amount. Right. All right. Thank you, Mark. Got it. Thank you. Thanks. Um, uh, energy efficiency. Michael, are you still online? Yeah. If I could. Yeah. Do you want to share your screen? You're going to get kicked at three minutes. Oh, it's really hot. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> So he knows to make them able to share us. Yeah, are you ready to share if we see if I can do that already? Yeah. Thanks, Vicky. Yeah. Back up to okay. slideshow, start slideshow. Okay. Um, you know us, I'm Ginevra. I'm the program director at Sustainable Woodstock. Michael's our executive director. We are here to present our um, equal energy opportunity for all initiative. So, quick background. You can go to the next. Um, in, from calculations performed by our um, intermunicipal regional energy coordinator, about 60% of our households are low and moderate income. Many people can't afford efficiency upgrades like weatherization, heat pumps, solar. Um, and beyond that, they can't actually afford heating costs just at a base level, as we saw this past winter. So 
This project will provide free energy audits to homeowners, grants for health and safety upgrades that are needed in order to do energy projects, as well as grants of $3,000 for at least 25 homeowners for things like weatherization, heat pumps, and heat pump hot water heaters. This just shows who would be the target group for this funding. So it would actually be the second row there, the moderate income homeowners. That's just for the very, very basic reason that low income homeowners are eligible for free weatherization through the state of Vermont already. So of course, we're not opposed to working with those folks um, that do that weatherization like heat pumps, but the focus group would be people who are low income enough to not be able to afford this themselves, but are not getting help from the state. Um, this is just a quick example of how that funding could be distributed. It's really dependent on what homeowners uh, need. In total, it comes out to $82,800. The first two not lines of numbers are the 13 and 12, add up to the 25 um, grants of $3,000. And then that the last, the third line with 7,800 is energy audits, health and safety upgrades. And for match, we have 56,960. This funding comes from grants from the Canada Family Charitable Foundation and the Woodstock Area Relief Fund, now the hub. These are finite sources, so we have this money and we've actually been doing these projects in Woodstock and the surrounding towns, but we will run out and we will no longer be able to do them. Uh, we're very thankful for what we have been able to do. It's been really exciting to do this work for people who really struggled this past winter. And did you want to touch on this? Ted? Sure. So uh, and these programs that we're talking about for the ARPA funding is uh, working towards the goals that the town and the village have approved in the comprehensive energy plan, which are outlined here, uh, that the town uh, vote, the voters approved in the climate emergency and action resolution of 2020 and the ready for 100, which um, at then municipal, uh, I mean, town manager Bill Swanson sign, and the Woodstock Town Plan, which supports non municipal programs and initiatives to encourage uh, the town in terms of energy efficiency and reducing carbon based fuels. We hit three minutes. Yeah. Okay, go to the next yeah, one. Ended on that. Yeah. <laughs> and we just um, provided this one. Again. This is an example of work we've done Good with time. a family. Okay. Yeah, well done. <laughs> So I, are you asking, you, you said that the cost was 828, but then you had um, grants of 569. So are you asking? Oh, that was match. So from us, we have, we are offering match in our time and from other grant sources that we have for this work. And what um, other fundraising are you doing to get this money? Uh, we've got um, another source of funding coming. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of which ones we've got coming in. Well, we've got our second round of the, the, um, candidate, the funds. candidate funds yeah. coming in that yeah. it's part of a two-year grant that we've obtained yeah. for this work so and you also some, said something about surrounding towns so are these funds for surrounding towns or just woodstock the funds we have currently include surrounding towns as well as woodstock mm -hmm. this money would just be for woodstock yeah. residents we're just targeting woodstock in this proposal um, and a great point to make kind of related to arpa itself is that um, I looked up the goals of ARPA, the funding actually, and one of them was to fight the pandemic and support families struggling with public health, health and economic impacts, which we've seen a lot of this winter, um, I think, in this town and in Vermont. Um, and if you got some of the ARPA funds, would the process and completion be done by 2025? Certainly could be, yeah. yeah if we had a deadline, yeah. yeah. That would give us enough time. Mm -hmm. Um, we this, so this is a several year project. We have also received some funding from the New Hampshire Charitable Foundation and the Vermont Community Foundation. Those funds have been spent up to this point because we've been working on an ongoing basis with households to um, implement these energy efficiency projects already. But that's some additional funding that we've been working. On. Okay. Great. Any other questions? That's all I have. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. An okay. opportunity to present it. And that's actually take your chair right Wait, there. Thompson. Yes, yeah, so we got Thompson. Thank you for uh, the end. Uh, I'm Deanna Jones. Like, we haven't met yet. Our uh, director for the Thompson uh, Senior you. Center. And I don't have slides, but I'm going to um, 
read, which I don't normally do, just so that I can try to stay within the time limit. Um, so thank you for this opportunity to be here. Um, the Vermont age group of 65 to 79 has increased by 40,000 people in the past 10 years. Windsor County and Woodstock is increasing at an even greater extent than Vermont as a whole, with certain age group um, projected to increase by over 100%, more than doubling between 2010 and 2030. These trends are very visible at the Thompson, with an increase in Meals on Wheels in the last 10 years, going from 5,800 meals to 18,000 Meals on Wheels last year. Um, given these trends, we should anticipate the demand for Meals on Wheels alone to exceed 25,000 and expect the primary population we serve to again double in the next 15 years. The Thompson has a proven track record of being responsive to our community, and our service reach is over 50% of the population on the census for those aged 65 and older, while comparatively, the average reach of rural senior centers is 11%. We are already in the position of putting people on waiting lists. We've had to turn people away from holiday meals, Veterans Day lunches and programs, and we are at our capacity for the number of meals we can produce in our kitchen and the number of people we can welcome into our building. To that end, we need to renovate and plan to expand our kitchen, dining room and conference rooms to better serve our community. It's an 18, um, 1,800 square foot addition and renovation of existing spaces. And in total, we need 1.9 million for this project, which we anticipate to happen in phases with the kitchen expansion beginning first. Um, we have already started receiving private donations and our board has committed invested funds and we are seeking grant funds for capacity building but we need to reach out broadly to all available sources to make this project a reality. In closing, um, I'd also like to speak briefly to the point of how much town support for this project would mean not only literally, but also fundamentally to the Thompson. Many senior centers in Vermont and across the country are town departments relying on their towns for significant portions of their operating budgets, including capital building projects and funding. In spite of significantly rising food and operating costs, we've not increased our requests to the towns we serve since before COVID. We asked Woodstock for only 8% of our operating budget. And in the 12 years that I've been in this role as executive director, we've never asked the town for capital project or building funding support. A grant in any amount toward the first phase of our kitchen renovation and expansion would be immensely helpful um, towards our total goal and show town support for this critical service and growing segment of our population. And I have um, all of the details, including the budget and the phases um, and exactly what the project is for you. Again, perfectly timed. And of course, I'm happy to take questions. I think okay. the only um, so kind of similar to Eric's other question a minute ago was just for timeline, you know, this is something that you're looking at starting now. So is there something, a portion of the project that would be spent in 24 or 25? There is or, a portion that would be spent in 2024. Um, we have started it and it's there's three phases. Um, there was a dining room egress that's completed. Um, and we had the funding for that. Um, the kitchen renovation and expansion is the next phase, and we anticipate starting in 2024 or 2023 still. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third phase, as depending on the funding, um, would be the conference room um, expansion. Okay. Okay. Um, two questions on this. One, um, you know, with the new kitchen plan, how many more? People could you serve? How many more meals could you uh, provide? Yeah. Um, and then with all this renovation, would you have to um, increase your staff to then be able to provide all the services? Yes, we would. Um, we, if you see in that document, there's a, a existing um, kitchen, and then the highlighted portion is the new kitchen. Yep. Um, the, right now, the space. Um, really only allows for two staff members in that kitchen. And that's really why we're at capacity. 
Um, we bring in a third staff member for big events, um, but we would have to put them on permanently. Yeah. So we do anticipate increasing our operating budget to staff this. Okay. Yeah. And that's not part of the ask. Um, we're just looking for the building funding. Do you think you'd have to still turn people away if this was able to expand? I certainly hope not. Um, the seating um, arrangement that's in, in that document um, as well um, shows a couple of different layouts and putting um, much larger dining space on the first floor. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I should note I'm on the board of the Thompson, so I'll, when we get to discussing it, I'm going to abstain. Okay. And was there any, did we miss anyone? Or is there anyone who's here to, that, that wants to present who hasn't yet? And are there any outstanding questions for anyone? Just, just a question on your timing. Could you, do you mind if you just come up to the chair? Sorry, people on, online can hear. Thank you. Just a question on your timing and when you'll make your decisions. Um, it sounds like we're not going to hear about the town hall numbers till the May 17th meeting. I mean, the earliest we could make a decision is June, right? Yeah. Well, there's also, sorry, um, do you have that online? Um, <laughs> um, at, at any point, the select board can vote to allocate funds. So it doesn't have to be all at once. Um, they can allocate as they see fit uh, up until the money spent. So you do it all at once. They could decide to do fund two projects next week. Um, it's really up to how they want to use the money if they want to also have some money in reserve for emergency that comes up within the time frame. So it's kind of, it can be all, all at once or it could be throughout, you know, the next year and a half. And remind me what the total ARPA dollars are. I have the pull exact number, but um, it was about over 600,000 before uh, we allocated the 118 for the, for the fire air packs. So we'll close it to around 550, 500 at this point. So many worthy projects and not that much money at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like a big number until you try to start slicing it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I appreciate that. And we'll move if I can find where my agenda is again. Uh, new business. So we're in, yeah, new business. Right. Um, so the middle school. Yeah, uh, this is um, a, a recommendation from the Economic Development Commission to fund a grant for the Mill School. This is the fifth, uh, the Mill School is a new childcare uh, facility that is planning to open as early as June um, to provide 17 additional spaces on top of the 74 approximately spaces that we had funded in our first four grants. Um, th those 74 spaces, by the way, are split roughly half and half between under three, zero to two, and pre after school. Those are the two segments, particularly the under three is the biggest, is the area of biggest need. The after school is the second biggest. And so we funded those two areas, two for the former, two for the latter. This is the fifth grant. It's, it's again for the zero to two. 17 spaces. They're asking for $94,679.20, which is about 30, about a little bit more than a third, maybe 35% of the total project cost of about $275,000. Um, we have the, the main concern of the EDC. We had two concerns, but both were satisfied in our evaluation, which is why we're recommending the grant. The first was um, that they, um, the first was that there be sufficient demand. We had already funded significant expansion of capacity. We did a further analysis and confirmed that there are still, even with the additional 17 spots, there will still, still be, by our conservative estimate, at least three times that number of kids that are still not going to be served by our prior expansion grants. That's how big the demand is. So we satisfied that. The second is that unlike the first, the other four grants, which were given all to existing providers, this grant is for a completely new provider. 
Um, and so we made the grant a contingent on th um, three things. First, that they hire an experienced director, executive director that meets the state's requirements. Second, that they receive their license to operate. Those first two, that, that in order to receive a license, they have to have the executive director. So um, that's a little bit of a duplication, but, but the license is the broader requirement. And third is that we would give them the, release the funding as they uh, register students. So we would give them one third of the funding when they had when they were serving six students, two thirds when they were serving twelve, and the f remainder of the grant, the last third once they st started serving seventeen. Um, and so, given that our concerns were satisfied, um, we are excited actually to recommend this. I do think that this is likely to be the last child care grant that we give for some period of time, since all of the organizations are now going to be working on spending the funds that we gave them in order to create the expansion, although some expansion has already happened. So uh, that's our recommendation to grant the Mill School $94,679.20 to help uh, fund their $275,000 project. The only concern that was uh, raised to me is uh, the certificate of occupancy. Um, Fire chief wasn't certain that um, the building be able to accommodate 17 children. So I would just, um, any any motion would just be kind of contin contingent on um, final certificate of occupancy. Okay, that's fine. I believe that, that, that I, well, I should say, I assume that the state license is contingent on that, but we will make that an explicit. An yeah, explicit he wasn't point. sure what the, um, what the uh, agency is there a way to determine that before we spend money? Is there a way to determine we, whether we, or not it's capable? We're, we won't be spending <laughs> money, we, Carrie. We won't spend any money until these these qual these requirements are met. So okay, so this 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 bucket of money is not for the build out for any of those things. No, it is for the build out. However, the grantee, the mill school, has already been told. We told them at the beginning because they were a new organization that we would not, even though it was for the build out. So they've arranged they've arranged bridge financing, and they they are taking on the risk that they don't get a license, they don't get a certificate of occupancy, they can't hire the right person. And they understood that from the beginning. They they accepted that. We explained this before they applied that we would likely be doing that. And that's what we are doing. So the town is fully, we, we will not spend money unless there are six children in a licensed facility in a building that they're allowed to do it in. Okay. And if I could just clarify, it wasn't, you know, a certificate of occupancy or none at all. It just, it may be a slightly reduced number. Uh, understood. Okay. I, um, yeah, that's interesting because like 13 students compared to 70. I don't know quite how that works. It's yeah. just one concern. Okay, well, yeah, well, that that's interesting because the, <laughs> because I think, for example, I mean, just in the extreme yeah. case, it, I think the EDC had this is a problem for the EDC, not for you, and we'll come back and recommend. But if they came back and said it's no problem, we've got weak or now can do one child. Please give us the ninety four thousand dollars. I think we wouldn't right. be happy about yeah. that. Yeah, I, no. I think, yeah. <laughs> so I think the so I, I think we'll I'm going to suggest that that if you if you approve this grant that you add the qualification of the certificate of occupancy and that you give the EDC the ability to adjust our recommendation or or pro make it pro rata or make an adjustment to our recommendation if once we find out what the capacity is. Okay. I think if you don't give us that authority, you've just approved the grant. So I would appreciate, and I think you would want to give us that that ability. Yeah. John, is there a time limit um, on when these requirements need to be met? Th there is not. Okay. So. Should but, there, but they don't yeah, get any should, funding. Should, they're taking the risk. So. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So could we put it off for a month? I don't know that they would get the certificate of occupancy within within the month. I don't know what the timeline for that would be. Correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, John, but you don't disperse any money to the grantees in, except when they have when they essentially tell you we spent this money on this thing. Is that correct? Correct. 
And in this case, not only will they have they, they will have spent the money before. Th that's correct, but not but in this particular grant, it's not only that they spent the money, but that they're also serving the children. Right. So in other words, we're satisfying all of the all of the risks. I, what we care about is that there are 17 kids that are getting served, and and that the EDC believes that that's worth a grant of ninety four thousand dollars. I think if you I, rather than rather than postpone the decision, Ray, I think you can accomplish the same thing without. What I don't want to do is to have their their lenders get concerned and not extend them the bridge financing, uh, which which they've. I think if you would, if we can just tell them what our requirements are, and I think certificate of occupancy is a perfectly reasonable one if it's not subsumed in the license, um, but. I do think the EDC would like to have the ability to reduce the amount proportionally if if 17 is not allowed. I think so, that's really important. Yeah, so, so maybe maybe you could just approve it on that basis that the grant you would approve a grant of the 100% of the amount with a certificate of occupancy if if that is equal to or exceeds 17 and that you would reduce the amount of the grant pro rata if it's less than 17. Okay. So I think the it has to be 17 plus staff, right? The 17 and I, I think the 17 is for the students, students yeah. right. for which the is, children. So I think staff which, is extra. Which is why they reduced it. They were telling us 20 originally, and then they said no, the, the occupancy includes the staff. So they reduced the number of kids to 17. So that's right, Susan. Okay. So we need the certificate of occupancy for 20. Yeah. So if I could try to summarize this. So the motion would be um, to approve the project contingent on a certificate of occupancy that allows for at least 17 students or children. Um, and in the event that a certificate of occupancy is less than that, the EDC is authorized to adjust the amount pro rata. Okay. <laughs> the amount down. <laughs> adjust the amount down pro rata. Yes. Adjust the amount down for rata. Above 17, that's we're we're not Above. prepared to give a bigger grant. Yeah. Very good. And I just want to take before I, I'm in full agreement with all of this, but I have been getting lots of emails from people from lots of different schools in town, and there has been some disharmony, I would say. And I am so excited to have new child care facilities and new spots for our children. This is critical for us to grow as a community. And I just want it to be on record that I'm so excited for all of these organizations to work together collaboratively, because that's how we all succeed in this small community that we're in. That's what I'd say. Could I just add a brief comment? I, I ex The EDC discussed this and endorsed exactly the point that you're making, both our excitement and a desire which we made in a somewhat more pointed fashion than you did, a desire for these groups to uh, to work together uh, in order to meet Woodstock's needs. All right. So the motion has been made and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Carries? Thank you. Uh, update from the Investment Advisory Committee, Joe. Yes, I have a... Do, do you have the ability to share the slide or shall I? I think, I think Nikki can give you uh, approval, but maybe I can. I think I have it. Yeah, you should be able to, Jill. Thanks, Nikki. Okay. All right. So um, I'm here to report for the Investment Advisory Committee. The Investment Advisory Committee provides advice to the trustees and the select board on the Rockefeller Endowment Fund. This fund is $1.7 million. Its primary objective is to pay the equivalent of the property taxes that were paid by the mansion. So this year it contributed uh, 66000 to the town and 10500 to the village. Um, we put these, we try to manage the fund so there's adequate money to pay this money, these funds every year, and to increase them by the amount that the property taxes go up. And I, we try to report to you every quarter, we don't always manage it. Um, 
the money is invested in three places. It's in a Vanguard stock fund, a Vanguard bond fund, and um, the Vermont Community Loan Fund. And those three amounts um, add up to 1.7 million. We, um, we track performance against indices. So the first graph shows you how the stock fund has been performing against the um, an equity index, and it's just been tracking it. That's what the index fund that we have invested our money is designed to do. So it's been doing its job. The bond fund tracks um, that we invest in tracks an, a bond index. We've done better than that index on a couple of months, primarily just due to the circumstances of timing. We took the money out of the bond, um, our bond fund to pay property taxes in February. And that's when the bond market took a hit and we had less money in it. So we did better than it. So we can report that the investments seem to be are, are doing as well as the marketplace and have increased by 5% since September the 30th, which was the last time we spoke to you. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, there's no other other business. Uh, so Board of Sewer Commissions, and we have a sewer abatement request from 6th Swain Street, uh, William Badalana. Seems similar. You're getting to the request yeah. <laughs> um, This is pretty similar to one we heard last month. Right. So. Um, how, do we know how they got billed last year? That I mean, it must have been billed the same way last year, right? Yes, presumably. It, it doesn't. He doesn't say it, but it, uh, Six Saint Street. Uh, so it's up on London Hill. Um, we can't picture which numbers six, but. It's not the first one that you see, but it's up the hill on the right, past the first, past the, there's one on the right, one on the left. He's the next one on the right. Okay. Um, I mean, I just think we should be consistent. Yeah. No, and I, 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 if we I, haven't approved yet, um, Mr. Uh, was it Joe? Um, Yeah, I don't think I'm in a position to approve this one. May I ask a question? Go ahead. So, is this not the case that um, a property that is occupied by one person is being charged for a two-person rate? I, I was trying to read, but I'm not sure I got it quite clear. It's or by bedrooms. So, which system are we using these days? Oh, it's we we reverted to the original system for billing, um, and so in the event of no water meter, it goes to bedrooms. Yeah. Nikki, are you there, or does it? No, it I didn't think it did. Or does it no, it's not bedrooms. It's occupancy. So single, double, and family rates. Oh. We talked about bedrooms and we backtracked. Right. Yeah. Well, I guess in that case, we could actually prove last month's and this one if they're both. But do you, I guess but, my question is, do you do it mid-year or do you, I mean, because then you're, you budgeted for the money. Yeah, you can't, filled. You can't do it I think year. that they have to come in and ask for the relief for the next billing. Like Which is what idea. Joe did last month. Yeah, and I don't think we you guys did anything, right? Did we, postpone we, we postponed it for discussion about but, what to do in the. And I think at some point we need to address because I think the problem is you know you build people up, 
at the one person rate and they're very quick to tell you when they're only one yeah. person, but they never tell you when they're two. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, um, I feel like just, this we, I, that, my memory is that they were discussing the change, just going off bedrooms made more sense. Right. I and then we also I thought, thought, I thought that, that they did that. I thought that was no, but hard. also the issue that comes I up is it was discussed but never implemented. Right. Yeah. So you have someone that was those nice that has eight bedrooms. You know, they started someone who's by themselves the fee for eight people. But then they put a water meter on there. Well, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't put a water meter on if I'm being honest, but you know, that's that's costly for the town to do. So I, I think we can't do it for this year. This is. I, I just don't think you can do it mid year. I think he has to come in before the. Right. Well, oh. last month, Joe asked us for, you know, know, yeah. So Joe yeah. asked us for to do it for next year. Uh, and I think the discussion was we want to have a larger discussion on how to yeah. build. Right. Yeah. To postpone that. Yeah. Yeah. Because next year would be next fiscal, next fiscal year, not. It would be the next bill. Next bill, yeah. It would be, be next right. March 24. Right. Yeah. For the, for so, the, I mean, the, the board can, you know, reject this current bill, but, you know, let them know that we're considering going forward, making a change for the next film cycle. Do we want to do this now and have him and Joe come back next month? I, I think this should be a conversation with the board of how you want to yeah, build going I, forward. I think we just... Yeah. Um, Reject it for now and, and to come up with a better plan. I guess my thought is if their request is coming in when we haven't changed it, I don't have a problem with processing it now that we're kind of understanding. Um, if, this, if, if this bill is for the fiscal year starting. Well, Joe asked us for next bill. He's asking us to abate. I, Agree with the point that we shouldn't abate something that we're, you know, right. planning on. But if our rules are currently by occupancy, I mean, that his change was the present one. The change wasn't such. I mean, his his wife died three or four years ago. Oh, Battle Honesty. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I. I <laughs> And, and I don't know what he paid last year, so it's hard to. I see. Yeah. If he's been, I mean, she did die three or four years ago. So under our current guidelines, he's being incorrectly billed, right? Right. So then I think in that case, we approve. Yeah, but then that opens the door for. No, if we've been incorrectly billing someone, which we have in his case, because he's a single person, and that's the guidelines that we're using right now. Yeah. Then I, I think you correct it for the next. Yeah. Season. Because otherwise, we're gonna we're gonna end up with a budget shortfall. We have all these people who correct in the middle of a of a budget year. You know, we've budgeted the user fees based on mm -hmm. numbers. And so, who who is it? At, Whose responsibility is it? It's it's the homeowner's responsibility to keep us informed of occupancy. I mean, that seems yeah. fair to me. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah, I think that's fair. So, so the, the issue does come up as we discussed that, as you said, when someone leaves the house, they're very willing to tell us it right. goes down. They don't tell us yeah. someone moves in. Right. Yeah. That's why the discussion of going to bedrooms, mm -hmm. you know, probably is something we should put on yeah. the agenda. So I think, I guess. I There's can't think of a, Joe's last. Is it Carol? I don't know. There's going to be a line of if we approve reducing this bill. There's going to be a line of people here yeah. next month. Well, I think what I was going to suggest is going back to Joe, whatever's I can't think of his last name from last month, and William for this month to approve for next cycle. But prove it now. But I don't we, think he's going to plan about getting. We, we don't know how the bills are going to go out yet. And I think if we know. We don't know if it's going to be bedrooms, if it's going to be occupancy. It can't be occupancy because, like Susan said, everyone that has 10 kids is going to come down and say there's only one person living in the house. There's going to be a way to, to, to figure that out. And I don't think we should make decisions for the next fiscal year 
without knowing what how we're going to do this. I don't totally disagree. I just think if the rule if the rule is the rule, but, but what if it changes? Well, what if it goes to two bedrooms? I know, but what if the speed limit changes? So I, I my recommendation. So we have plenty of time before the next bills go out. Um, almost another year. I think right. it's February when they go out. Um, so I don't think we need to make decisions. My recommendation to the board: we don't need to make any decisions today or the next week of how we're going to bill next year. Um, I think we can decide on this case here. We want to allow a baby or not on on this single thing in front of us and have a decision on that, and then have a larger discussion about sewer billing uh, for next year on a, on a follow-up agenda. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I can't, because Susan's right. If we if we approve this one, it's, it's going to be a line out the door, and everyone's going to be a single occupancy. Yeah. yeah. He could have come to us sooner, so. Right. Yeah. Do it. So we could just tell him that going forward, it's noted that it's a single occupancy. We don't know until we decide how we're going to build a sewer. Right. Well, I mean, we can note it's a single occupancy. But we can note it for now. We can note it's a single occupancy now. Right. But it, it may change if we decide to change the way we bill. If we change how we bill. Yeah. Yeah. Once, once he's clearing that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. But I mean, I don't know. And the same thing would go for Joe. Yeah. For next year, we can note that he's single occupancy. And if the rules change, then the rules change. Yeah. This is a very problematic system. It is. It is. Yeah. It, is. Um, it does, doesn't sit, sit well with me that according to our own guidelines, he's been billed incorrectly. I don't think this can be our responsibility. I, 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 get, I totally get that it can't, but it still doesn't feel like quite the right thing. Yeah. Um, do, do we need a motion on these then, or can we just note that there's single occupancy? Well, we have to make a motion not to approve this. Okay, so motion to deny. Motion to deny the request from William Bellina to uh, reduce his school bill. Mid tax year. Yeah, right. Mid 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 tax year. With a note that we will change the occupancy going forward for the upcoming tax year. Yeah. Unless we change. I'm not our... comfortable with that part, but you well, can make... well, if we change our if we change our right. way we bill, we change the way we bill, but we currently aren't. So yeah, yeah. all right. The motion has been made. Is it second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, hold on. Oh, Curry. His name is Joe Curry. It's right in the minutes. That's what bothered you today, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> you couldn't sleep. I mean, I, I, I think since we had this exact same discussion next month, do we mind um, just noting that Mr. Curry is a single occupancy going forward? I think so. Is there, do we need a motion? I don't think we need, no, even I mean, need a motion on no. that, do we? So I'm just going to let... Just let no, we're going to let Corey know, yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. I think that's the fairest... Yeah, I mean that's fine. Uh, but yeah, the rest of the minutes the minutes look fine to me. Um, the only thing I remember is I thought we asked um, Ms. Oldenburg to produce a letter from oh uh, the condo association saying she could only keep only have one person in the building. So, so approve the minutes with the addition that we had requested Ms. Oldenburg to produce a letter from Heritage Condo that she can only have one person in her unit. Yep. Okay. Is there a second? You'll have to get Carrie because I wasn't seeing Oh, okay. Carrie, can you say? Yeah, I'll second. Yes, I'll All second. Right. Thanks. Sorry. Motions are made, seconded. 
All in favor to approve the minutes? Aye. Aye. And, and one abstention. And one abstention. And uh, to adjourn. Second. So moved. And Yay. all in favor? Aye. 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 All right.